so I'm the I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Interstellar Lab, and uh, so we're a startup. We're three years old. Uh, we're a bit less than twenty people right now. Uh, mostly based in Paris, um, and. And we do hardware, software, uh, and and we use a bit of artificial intelligence right now, and, and we're planning on using much more in the future. Uh, I personally also have been involved in in, a, in several organizations supporting women in AI. Um, so one is called actually Women in AI. The second one is called uh, The Good AI, um, and uh, uh, and I'm and I'm a member. Interstellar is actually a member of it, and, and all the point is how we can use artificial intelligence to uh, to develop solution to tackle the different SDG, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and so, so Interstellar, so we're not an AI company, but uh, but we use AI in developing our product. So very, uh, very quickly, um, so in, in terms of the system we're developing, so what we do, uh, we call them the de deployable system. Um, so, so we've been developing uh, environmentally controlled module. Um, so those modules are the domes that you can see right now on the on the presentation that you can plug in together uh, to recreate completely closed environments that are regenerative. So we can recycle the air, the water, and the waste, and and create the perfect climatic conditions so plants can grow uh, without using too many too much um, too many resources. Uh, water, energy, and, and all of this. So, what we've been developing is a is a here is a station. So it's combining a different system to develop such a station. We had first to start with a uh, with a very scientific and mathematical approach, uh, where we started with the basic requirements. Okay, so if if we need to feed a group of 10 people, uh, what do we need when it comes to oxygen, when it comes to water, when it comes to food, when it comes to space to live? And then based on all those requirements and calculation, then we've been able to design the, the system and what you can see right now. Um, and so, of course, if you want to feed a group of 10 people within a small structure, uh, you need uh, several units. Uh, one unit is to bring the food. Food. Uh, so that's the aeroponics units that you can see right now. Uh, one unit uh, to grow a greenhouse because some plants are not growing in aeroponics. And also for uh, to meet some psychological um, uh, needs, human needs, we needed to recreate a very natural environment. Uh, and last one is a is a treatment unit where we can treat the water and the um, uh, and the waste. Of course, the habitat units. Uh, and all of this has been, we, 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 we designed it based, it was a very mathematical approach at the beginning. Um, so after designing this and, and, and going through, you know, um, the stoichiometric equations, the, the scientific model and the requirements, uh, and then that we knew how, you know, how much space we need, then we've been focusing on designing the hardware. And so the first hardware that we've been focusing on, the first pod uh, is called the biopod. So this is what you can see, uh, you can see right now. And this is actually, uh, um, an advanced greenhouse, a completely enclosed greenhouse where we recycle the air. We use very less, very le few water compared to other existing indoor farming system, uh, and we recreate the environments to plant for plants to grow. So application it's on Earth regarding new agricultural system. Uh, it's for biodiversity preservation because we can grow pretty much anything inside the biopod, and in space, as as Kande uh, said, um, the application will be to design to to put on on the moon and in the future on Mars, a system that will be able to grow plants and so to fulfill some of the nutritional requirements of astronauts. So it's a very long-term vision, uh, but so one step after the other, we're getting there. Uh, so here you can see more images of the uh, of the biopod, so which is a which is an inflatable dome structure. It's 11 meter long, four meter, 4.5 meter high, six meter wide. Uh, it has an airlock at the entrance, and everything is fully automated. It's signed, and it's designed to grow plants. Um, I'll, I will try to okay to get to to our topic here, which is that which is the AI. But so to 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 so first we use mathematical model to be able to design and to size a system, um, and then we also using um, a mathematical uh, yeah mathematical approach basically to run several simulation. So if you want to know what you're gonna grow inside and to have a system that is fully automated, you need first to build a, a prediction model to understand how plants gonna grow, how much CO2 they need, how much O2 they will they, they will give back, how much water they will transpire, and so this is where. 
um, uh, uh, algorithm, uh, you know, algorithmic can help designer, architect, and engineer in designing and sizing the system. Uh, so what you can see here is the inside of the of the greenhouse, which gives you a little bit more understanding of the product we're building. Um, and so and so, if you want a product that is fully automated, you need to have a kind of emission control, if I can say, but you need to access what's going on inside the pod from a computer. And so a big part of what we're doing is to run the crop simulation to develop scientific models so we 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 forecast how plants gonna grow so we can we know when to spray water we know how to change the temperature the humidity uh, and then at the same time is to receive real-time data from the sensors that are inside the biopod so we can directly control what's going on depending on what's of what's happening real time versus the simulation so it's this it's, it's this approach of having a simulation model and then getting the real-time data and then matching with the intelligence so we can find the best uh, we can trigger at the right time all the hardware that we have inside the atmospheric the water um, uh, the lights um, um, the nutrients uh, which is with, with usually it's humans who are doing that and here we're trying to replace that by, by a form of artificial intelligence uh, the first application of um, as so right now we're uh, focusing on building the first full scale dome so we have several small prototypes where we've been we've been testing the automation we've been testing the sensors uh, but one first application of uh, of uh, um, of uh, uh, artificial intelligence that we use it was to design a crop selection algorithm uh, so if you want to know how the plants going to grow inside the biopod you need to predict it and so to do that we developed a software where you put the requirements so how many people you want to feed uh, and the algorithm is coming up with the best solution. So, the, so, it, so th this is one of the focus on, on how we've been applying artificial intelligence to what we do. Uh, the problem that we're trying to solve here the, the, on this specific case was to select the plants you want we want to grow inside the biopod and we wanted to minimize the space we wanted to optimize how we're going to use the resources so the water the air and the light um and uh, and we want to and, and the objective is really to fulfill some nutritional goal and so the approach that we had for that was to create a simulation model for plant growth uh which uh, which we leverage on you know a lot of uh, um uh, publication especially some publication from nasa who's been working for the past 30 years in doing simulation of plant growth and under uh, environmentally controlled environments. Um, and then we combine a cost function and a genetic algorithm to be able to come up with the best plan on which plants we want to put where and how we're going to grow them. So we end up with a solution, which is pretty much a plant selection and a scheduling plan and so for the user he, he has nothing to do just you know to receive our recommendation and to the plants will grow by themselves plus we select them um it's so a very great. i mean I'm, yeah, I'm not sure i'm gonna have a lot of time to dig in but here you can see a little bit more about our crop selector software which is combining scientific approach so the energy cascade model which is a plant modelization model a crop database and and we put the the parameters which is minimizing the surface, minimizing the water consumption, how to diversify the food, um, and how to meet all the nutritional requirements. And then you can see uh, the, the cost function it puts there in, in this slide, but basically the algorithm is keep on trying, optimizing all the time by selecting plants, understanding, uh, 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 planning how they're gonna grow, how much nutrients they will provide, and then organizing so we can maximize the output and minimize the input, which is, that what we need to do right now, you know, uh, to, you know, regarding climate change, food production, water consumption, and all of this. Um, oh, I'm not sure we have the time to dig in. Yeah. yeah. So Barbara, I, we, we, I don't think we have the time, but I think everybody has gotten the idea. And maybe, you know, the thing that is coming out is that you really are, um, you are creating trust because if you're going to eat this food, you know, whether it be on space, whether it be, you know, in the desert, um, uh, you know, it, it is very clear that, that I trust you, I trust you to, you know, put together something that is, is, is going to be nutritious and, and, and feed, you know, people wherever they are. And this is very, very exciting. And so I would just like Thank to you. ask you to please share with everyone, just some of the people who are using now or, or who have um, said that they would like to use your, um, 
your biopods and, and, and intracellular? Of course, uh, of course, it's, 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 a, it's actually a very diverse crowd. Uh, so obviously we have the space agencies we're working with. So we work with NASA, we work with the European Space Agency, with the CNES, we're just starting a, we're starting a new program with them actually at, uh, next week. Um, so, so those are the, the space players, let's say. And now for the terrestrial application, we have three types of customer. The first one are scientific research institutes because they want to test and to find the best climatic conditions to grow plants. So finding solution for food production. Um, the second type, and it was really unplanned, uh, those are cosmetics and, and perfume players uh, because there is a huge problem right now on earth on sourcing the plants, sourcing vanilla, sourcing ylang ylang, sourcing vetiver, and with all this booming industry in getting you know, um, 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 uh, organic products, products, there is a problem of how do you access the raw material? And we are offering a solution to grow locally using less resources uh, very, you know, rare plants, and that are pretty much ex that are very expensive, and, and people are flying flying them from all over the world. So, so some big names uh, um, uh, like LVMH and uh, and uh, Givaudan, for are instance. Are going to have something in the moon? <laughs> uh, when? I mean, <laughs> yes. yes, yes, yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and just a, just the last the last example of your um, of of uh, I think you're working in the desert application yeah yes exactly and we're working in the desert so we we uh, we actually uh, so so we we raised um, around uh, uh, three three and a half million and one of our investors is actually uh, uh, the sovereign fund of Saudi Arabia so we're very, working very closely with them uh, and also with the with the UAE um, we actually going to be at the World Expo in October uh, to yeah. present our dome because uh, we're providing solution for desert desertic zone you know how to grow food over there which is a, okay. is a huge problem. <laughs> Wonderful. So, so we Marco, invite you any... in February to yeah. come to the great event we are preparing in yeah. Cannes, the World yeah. AI Can Festival. Maybe you can show how you will grow up <laughs> plants in. I would uh, love to. In the moon. that would be great. Thank I, I would love much. to. I would very love fun. to. Thank very, you. Very, very so, Marco, just let me give me just give me one minute just to. Thank all of our, our, our wonderful um, uh, uh, entrepreneurs and speakers. Uh, and perhaps can you all uh, put yourself back on, uh, on video? Yes, please, everybody put yourself back on video. And um, uh, I will, uh, I, I just really, you know, I think we've, we've all learned so much um, combining the artificial with the human, the, the importance of trust, um, the, um, the, 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 the inference, um, the ability to, you know, reason, to, to, to deduct, uh, the importance of all of this, not just in machines, but in our real life. And um, I just want to thank all of you so very much. I also want to give a big shout out also to Marie Herring. Marie, you must show yourself, please. Uh, <laughs> And uh, um, thank you. And uh, now over to my dear uh, and, and such an amazing uh, chair, uh, chairman, um, Marco Landi. He has been uh, a, true, um, a, a true innovator um, it, and, and uh, fantastic businessman and technologist. And we're so proud and, and honored to have him as our president of Institut Europea. So, Marco, thank you so much for giving all of thank us this you. chance thank to you, do thank it. Thank you, everybody. Merci beaucoup. Parce que je sorte de cette conférence vraiment contente de voir qu'il y a les femmes dans l'intelligence artificielle et quelles femmes. Et tu nous as montré de l'Inde, de l'Amérique, de notre Sophia Antipolis. Et je sorte avec cette certitude qu'on a un futur et dans la Lune et dans Mars. Ça serait <rire> formidable. Voyons si on a quelqu'un pendant que vous êtes là. S'il y a des questions, malheureusement, on est beaucoup en retard. Euh, S'il y a de quelques questions, vous serez les bienvenus. Autrement, on vous invite. Je m'arrête là. Vous avez une question Pas de questions 
Je pense qu'on peut passer maintenant à boire quelque chose. Merci beaucoup. C'était vraiment formidable. Thank you, Candice. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And we'll see each other at our great uh, world's first artificial intelligence conference in Cannes, uh, February 10th to 12th. We invite you all. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.